Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about covariation. Animal breeders are often concerned with how two traits or two values vary together. They are concerned in the word covariation. For example, a swine breeder may want to know if daily weight gain is related to feed conversion. A dog breeder may want to know if observed temperament is related to breeding value for temperament. In each case, the breeder want to know how two traits or values in traditional mathematical terms to variables co-vary. This picture depicts covariation for samples of 16 animals. X and Y represent attributes of these animals of some kind. For example, X and Y could be phenotypic values for different traits, breeding values for different traits, environmental effects for different traits, phenotypic values, and breeding values for the same trait, or whatever values are uh, of our interest. Each pair of black and white columns represent X and Y attributes for single animal expressed as deviations from the overall mean or mu. In this picture we see that X and Y show strong relationship with each other. Positive deviations for X are quite consistently associated with positive deviations for Y. Likewise, negative deviations for X are quite consistently associated with negative deviations for Y. Furthermore, larger deviations tend to be paired with larger deviations and smaller deviations tend to be paired with smaller deviations. But there are also exceptions to the rule. The fifth animal from the left, for example, shows a positive deviation for X and negative deviation for Y. And the animal on the far left show a very small deviation for X, but a fairly large deviation for Y. Given the general pattern, however, we can say that in this population X and Y exhibit strong positive covariation. And on the dot plot, we also see correlation between uh, this data when one values grow on uh, one axis, it also would grow on the other axis and all our dots would be spread in this manner from left uh, lower corner to the right top corner. In another sample from different population, we see uh, that X and Y are closely related also, but in this population positive deviations for X are quite consistently associated with negative deviations for Y and vice versa. Again, there are exceptions to this rule. The individuals on the far left and far right, for example, but because positive deviations in one attribute show strong tendency to be paired with negative deviations in the other attribute, and because larger deviations tend to be paired with larger deviations and smaller deviations tend to be paired with smaller deviations, we can say that in this population X and Y exhibit strong negative covariation. And if we do a dot plot, values on the X axis would increase and values on the Y axis would decrease. And this is how our graph would look like. Now let's take a look at the different sample of the different population. And in this sample, uh, there is no clear pattern to the relationship between X and Y. Sometimes positive deviations are paired with positive deviations, sometimes negative with negatives, sometimes positive with negatives. And there seems to be no consistency in the size of the deviations within a pair. In this population, there appears to be little, if any, covariation between X and Y. And dot plot may look like this, showing us no correlation at all or very weak correlation between X and Y. And this is all for today. In my following videos, I explain the importance of the covariation for breeders. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.